subtract shekelim. Under this heading the payment of a head tax is treated of, which amounted to one half of a shekel, in the Mycenae always referred to as a shekel, and which had to be paid by every Israelite, see Exodus 30. 12, upon the completion of his twentieth year. In the times of the existence of the temple, the proceeds of this tax were applied for communal sacrifices and for the needs of the capital. The manner of collection, investment, and application of this money forms the subject of this treatise. It contains, in addition, many other historical regulations, most of which, however, only held good during the existence of the Second Temple. Chapter 1. Meissner, A. On the first day of the month of Adar, warnings are heralded, from Jerusalem, concerning Shechlem A1 and Kaleim A2, the prohibition concerning the use, for plowing together. p. 2. Of an ox with an ass, and the sowing together of different kinds of seeds. On the fifteenth day of that month the Megillah Esther A3 is read in the fortified cities, and the same day the improvement of country roads, A4 marketplaces, and legal plunge baths is proceeded with. Public affairs are again taken up A5, at the same time, graves are marked with lime, I6 and messengers are sent out on account of possible claim. I7. P. 3. B. R. J. Huda says, at one time the messengers used to pull out the kaleim, illegally mixed seeds, and throw them at the feet of the owners. The number of the transgressors, however, being constantly on the increase, the kaleim were pulled out and thrown into the roads. Finally, it was determined that the entire fields of such lawbreakers were to be confiscated. B. 1. See, on the fifteenth of this month, Adar, the money changers outside of Jerusalem seated themselves at their tables. See one in the city of Jerusalem, however, they did not do this until the twenty-fifth of the month. See two as soon as the money changers seated themselves also in the city, the taking of pledges from. p. 4. The tardy ones commenced. C3 But from whom were pledges taken? From Levites, Israelites, proselytes, and freedmen, but not from women, slaves, and minors. If a father, however, commenced to give a pledge for a minor, he was not allowed to stop. From priests no pledges were taken, for the sake of peace, and the dignity of the priests themselves. C4. D said R. J. Huda, Ben Bukri proclaimed the following ordinance in Yavni, Jamnia, any priest paying his shekel commits no wrong. R. Johan and Ben Zakai, however, rejoined, not so. The ordinance should read, any priest not paying his shekel, commits a sin. D. 1 But the priests used to interpret the following passage to their advantage, it is written, Leviticus vi. 16, and every meat offering of a priest shall be wholly burnt, it shall not be eaten. They said therefore, were we obliged to contribute, our shekels, how could we eat our d2 omer? p. 5. First sheaves harvested, and the two loaves and the showbread, which were procured with the shekels of the head tax. e. Although it was ordained that no pledges were to be taken from women, slaves, and minors, if they offered to contribute, their money was accepted. From heathens and Samaritans it was not accepted. Nor were bird offerings, for men or women afflicted with venereal disease and for women who had recently been confined, accepted, nor sin and guilt offerings. E1 vowed and voluntary offerings, however, were accepted. E2 The following is the rule, everything which was vowed as an offering and all voluntary offerings were accepted. Anything not vowed for offering or given voluntarily was not accepted from them, heathens and Samaritans. So it is explicitly declared in Ezra, for it is written, Ezra 4. 3, It is not for you and us, both, 
to build a house unto our God. F. The following are obliged to pay a premium F1, in addition. P. 6. To the half shekel, Levites, Israelites, proselytes, and freed. Men, but not, priests, women, slaves, and minors. If one pay, the half shekel, for a priest, woman, slave, or a minor, he is exempt, from paying the premium, if he pay for himself and another. However, he must pay a premium for one. Amir says, he must pay, two premiums. One who pays a sola, whole Bible shekel, and receives in return a half, Bible, shekel must pay two premiums. F2. G. If one pay for a poor man, for a neighbor, or for a countryman, he is exempt from a premium, because it is charity, if he only advances them the money, he is not exempt. Brothers who, after dividing their inheritance, have their business in common, or partners, when they become obliged to pay a premium, are exempt from cattle tithe. G1 as long, however, as they must pay cattle tithe, they are exempt from a premium. How much does the premium amount to? According to Armia, to one sylvan me, one twenty-fourth of a shekel, but the sages say, to one half of a me. Chapter 2. Mycena, A, one may put together the shekelum and exchange them for darkens A1, Greek coins of permanent value, in order to be able to carry them more readily. Just as the money chests were on the order of horns in the city of Jerusalem, so were they also in the country. A2 If the inhabitants of a town sent their shekelim, to the city of Jerusalem, by messengers, and the money was stolen from them or was lost by accident, if the treasurers had already drawn their share, from the communal shekelim, the messengers of the city must swear to the fact before the treasurers. If the share had not yet been drawn, they, the messengers, must swear to the facts before the inhabitants of the town, and the latter must make the amount good. A3 If the money was recovered or returned by the P8 Thieves, both amounts are considered as shekelim, and nothing is credited to next year's account. B If one give his shekel to another to pay, his head tax, for him, and the man appropriates it to pay his own tax, he, the latter, commits embezzlement if the share had already been drawn, the same is the case with one who pays his shekel with sanctified money, after his share had been drawn and an animal was sacrificed for it. b1 If he took the money from the second tithes or from the sabbatical year fruit, he must eat the full value of same in the city of Jerusalem. b2 c If one gather together single coins and say, These shall serve for my shekelim. The eventual remainder is, according to the school of Shemai, a voluntary gift, according to the school of Hillel, it is not sanctified. If the man say, however, out of these I shall pay my shekelim, the eventual remainder is, according to both schools, not sanctified. If he say, these shall serve me for a sin offering, the eventual remainder is, according to both schools, a voluntary offering. If he say, out of these will I bring a sin offering, the eventual remainder is, according to both schools, not sanctified. C1. P. 9. D. R. Simeon says, What difference is there here between the shekelim and the sin offerings? Shekelim have their fixed value, but sin offerings have not. D. 1. R. J. Huda says, Even shekelim have no fixed value. For when Israel returned from captivity, half, darkens were paid, later, half, silas were paid, again, tabas, half shekels, were current, but not accepted, and finally people would only pay with dinars. D2 rejoined R. Simeon, nevertheless, the shekelim were all of like value at one and the same time, while as for sin offerings, one brings one silas worth, another two and a third three silas worth. D3. E. 
the remainder of monies intended for Shechlam is not. p. 10. Sanctified. e. 1. The remainder of monies intended for the offering of the tenth part of an ifa, lev. v. 11. Sin offering of the poor, for bird offerings of men or women afflicted with venereal disease and of women that had been recently confined, and for sin and guilt offerings, are considered voluntary offerings. Following is the rule. The remainder of everything designated for sin and guilt offerings is considered as a voluntary offering. E2 The remainder of whole offerings is applied to whole offerings, E3 of food offerings to food offerings, of peace offerings to peace offerings, that of the Passover offerings to peace offerings, and that of Nazarite offerings to Nazarite offerings. The remainder of such offering as is designated for a certain Nazarite is a voluntary offering. The remainder of monies for the poor in general, belongs to the poor, of money collected for a certain poor man belongs to that same poor man. The remainder of ransom monies for prisoners is applied to, the ransom of, other prisoners, of monies collected for a certain prisoner belongs to that prisoner. The remainder of burial monies is applied to, the burial of, other dead, of money collected for a particular dead, man, belongs to. p. 11. Tal legal heirs. Amir says, the remainder remains intact until Elijah comes again, as the herald of the resurrection. e. 4. R. Nathan says, it should be applied to the building of a gravestone for the departed. Chapter 3. Meissner, A. At three periods of the year money is drawn from the treasury, of the Shechlim, viz. Half a month before Passover, half a month before Pentecost, and half a month before the Feast of Booths. The same dates are also the terms for the obligation of cattle tithing, so says our Akiba. Benazai says, the dates for the latter terms are the 29th of Adar, the 1st of Shivan, and the 29th of Ab. Our Ilzer and our Simeon both say, the first of Nisan, the first of Shivan, and the twenty-ninth of Elul. But why do they say the twenty-ninth of Elul why not the first of Tishri? Because that is a feast day, and it is not allowed to tithe on a feast day. Therefore they ordained it for the preceding day, the twenty-ninth of Elul. A1. B. The money drawn from the treasury was brought in three chests, each of three sars capacity. On these chests was written, Aleph, Beth, Gimel. Our Ishmael says, they were marked in Greek, Alpha, Beta, Gamma. The one that drew the money was not allowed to enter, the treasury, with a turned up garment, nor with shoes nor sandals, nor with tefillin, nor with an amulet, in order that, in the event of his becoming impoverished, it should not be said that he was thus punished on account of transgression against the treasury, or if he became rich, that he enriched himself by means of money drawn from the treasury. For a man must stand as unblemished before his fellow men as before his God, as it is written, Numbers 32. 22. p. 13. Paragraph continues. And ye be thus guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and, Proverbs 3, 4, so shalt thou find grace and good favor in the eyes of God and man. B1. See, the members of the family of Argamaliel used to enter, each one with his shekel between his fingers, and throw it before the one who drew the money from the treasury, and the latter immediately placed it into the chest, which he took out. The one who came in to draw the money did not proceed before he had said to the bystanders, I will now proceed to draw, and they had answered, draw, 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 three times. C1. P. 14. D. After the man had completed the first drawing, he covered the balance with a cover of fur. The same was done after the second drawing, after the third drawing the balance remained uncovered, for, 
The covering in the first two instances, was done only in order not to draw by mistake again what had already been drawn from. The first drawing was performed in the name of the whole land of Israel, the second in the name of the cities near the boundaries, and the third in the name of the inhabitants of Babylon, Media, and all distant lands in general. Chapter 4. Mycena. A. What was done with this money drawn? The daily sacrifices, the additional sacrifices, and the drink offerings belonging to them were bought therewith, also the omers A1, sheaves, the two loaves, the showbreeds, and communal sacrifices in general. The watchmen who had to guard the aftergrowth on the sabbatical year were paid out of this money. Our Jose says, one who so desired could undertake the guarding, of the aftergrowth on sabbatical years, without pay. Eight two the sages answered him, Thou wilt admit thyself, that the sacrifices, from the aftergrowth on sabbatical years, must be brought only from communal property. A3. P. 16. B. The red heifer, the goat that was to be sent away, on the day of atonement the strip of scarlet, were paid for out of this money. The bridge for the cow, the bridge for the goat that was to be sent away, and the scarlet strip tied between the latter's horns, the canal, at the temple, the city wall, the towers and other necessities of the city, are paid for out of the remainder of the treasury money. B1 Abbasol says, the costs of the building of the bridge for the red heifer were defrayed by the high priests themselves. See, what was done with the balance left over in the treasury, after all the things in the preceding Meissner had been procured. Wines, oils, and fine meal were bought with it to the profit of the sanctuary, for the purpose of selling it again to those who brought sacrifices. See one so said Arishmael. Arakiba, however, says, sanctified monies or contributions for the poor are not dealt with for profit. D. What was done with the remainder of the money, taken from the chests? It is used for a gold plate for the decoration of the Holy of Holies. Our Ishmael says, the mentioned fruit, profit of the wines, oils, and fine meal sold in the temple, was for the benefit of the altar, and the remainder of the money drawn was for service utensils. Our Akiba says, the remainder of the money drawn was for the benefit of the altar and that of the drink offerings was for service utensils. Arhanina, the assistant chief of priests, says, the remainder of the drink offerings. P. 17. Was for the benefit of the altar and that of the money drawn was for service utensils. The two latter would not admit of the alleged gain from fruit D1, profit. E. What was done with the remainder of the incense? E1 At first the remuneration of the preparers of the incense was set aside from the treasury, the sanctification of the incense on hand was then transferred to that money, and the former was then given to the preparers in lieu of compensation E2, it is then bought back from them with the money of the new revenue, providing the new revenue was on hand in time, it was bought back with such money, otherwise, the old revenue was used for that purpose. f. If one devote his entire possessions in honor of the Lord, and among them are things which are fit for communal sacrifices, for example, incense, the preparers of the incense should be paid therewith. So teaches our Akiba. Ben Azai answered him f. 1, such is not the right mode of procedure. The Compensation. p. 18 of the preparers must first be separated from such possessions, then the sanctification of those possessions transferred to money, then give the separated things to the preparers for compensation, and, finally, buy them back from them with money of the new revenue. g. If one devote his possessions, and there are among them cattle fit for the altar, male or female, the male, according to Arilza, shall be sold for whole offerings and the female for peace offerings to such as are in need of them, and the proceeds of such sale, together with the other possessions, shall be devoted to the treasury for the maintenance of the temple. 
Archahashua says, the male are sacrificed as whole offerings, the female are sold to such as are in need of peace offerings, and the proceeds used for the sacrifice of whole offerings. The balance of the possessions is devoted to the maintenance of the temple. G1 said Arakiba, the opinion of Arilza seems to me to be more proper than that of Arjahashua, for Arilza has an even procedure, whereas Arjahashua divides it. G2 Papo says, I have heard that it is done according to both teachers, viz, according to Arilza if the owner who devotes his possessions explicitly mentions his cattle, and according to Arjahashua if he silently includes his cattle in his possessions. G3. P. 19. H. If one devote his possessions, and there are among them things fit for the altar, such as wines, oils, and birds, says Arilza, the latter things should be sold to such as need offerings of these kinds, and the proceeds used for the sacrificing of whole offerings, the balance of the possessions goes toward the maintenance of the temple. H. 1. I. Every thirty days the price is paid by the treasury are determined. If one contract to furnish flour at the rate of four sa, for one sala, and the price is raised to three, he must nevertheless furnish the same at four sa, for one sala. I one if he contracted the rate of three and the price fall to four, he must in that case furnish four, for the sanctuary always has that prerogative. If the flour become wormy, it is the loss of the contractor, and if the wine becomes sour it is also his loss, and he does not receive the money for his wares until the purchased wares have been favorably accepted as sacrifices at the altar. I too. Chapter 5 Meissner A. The following were the heads of offices A1 in the sanctuary, Johanan, son of Pinchers, keeper of the seals A2. A ear, superintendent, of drink offerings, Matthew, son of Samuel, superintendent, of the casting of lots A3, Peth A, ear, superintendent, of bird offerings. A4 Peth A, ear is Mordecai. But why do they call him Peth A, ear? Because he used to expound and interpret scriptures, and was master of seventy languages. Ben Uyer was, superintendent, of the cures of priests suffering with abdominal diseases. A5 Nihunaya was master of the well. I6. P. 21. Jebini was herald. I7 Ben Gabar was turnkey of the gates. A8 Ben Bibai was master of the temple guard. A9 Ben Azar was master of the kettle drums which were beaten as a signal for the Levites to commence their chant. Pigros, son of Levi, was, leader, of the singing. The family of Garmo, superintended, the making of the showbreeds. A10 The family of Abtinos, superintended, the preparing of the incense. A11 Eleazar, superintended, the making of the curtains. A12 Pinches superintended the vestments. A13. P. 22. B. No less than three treasurers and seven chamberlains must be appointed. B1 and no less than two officers were put in charge of public monies. Exceptions were made in the cases of Benaiah, superintendent of the cures of the sick, and Eliza, superintendent of the preparation of curtains, because they were unanimously elected by the community. See, there were four seals in the sanctuary, inscribed with the words Ajil, Kaf, Sakhar, Ram, Gdikid, and Hout, Sinner, meaning here one covered with sores. Ben Azai says, that there were five, seals, and the inscriptions were in Aramaic, meaning, calf, ram, kid, poor sinner, one afflicted with sores, and rich sinner, one afflicted with sores. The one inscribed with calf was used for drink offerings brought with offerings of the herds, large or small, male or female, the one inscribed with kid was used for drink offerings brought with offerings of the flocks, large or small, male or female, 
with the exception of rams, the one inscribed with ram served for drink offerings brought early with rams, the seal inscribed with sinner served for drink offerings brought with the three cattle offerings of those afflicted with sores. C1. P. 23. D. One who desired to bring drink offerings, for instance, went to Johanan, who was keeper of the seals, paid his money, and received a seal. He then went to Ear, who had charge of the drink offerings, gave him the seal, and received the drink offering. In the evening the two officers came together, when Ear turned over the seal and received instead the money. If there was too much money, it belonged to the sanctuary, if too little, Johanan had to supply the deficit, for the sanctuary had that prerogative. E, one who lost his seal had to wait until evening. If there was a surplus sufficient to cover the seal, E1 he was given the drink offering for that amount, otherwise, he did not receive it. The date of the day was on the seal to prevent fraud. F, there were two chambers in the sanctuary. One was P. 24. Called Chamber of the Silent, the other chamber of utensils. In the former, devout men secretly gave charitable gifts, and the poor of good family received the secretly their sustenance. In the other chamber, everyone who desired to offer a utensil voluntarily, laid it down. Every thirty days the treasurers opened the chamber, and every utensil found to be fit for the maintenance of the temple was preserved, while the others were sold and the proceeds went to the treasury for the maintenance of the temple. F1 Chapter 6 Mycena, A. There were thirteen curved chests A1 and thirteen tables in the sanctuary, and thirteen prostrations took place in the sanctuary. The family of Agamaliel and of Ahananiah, chief of the priests, made fourteen prostrations. This extra prostration was made towards the wood chamber, a two because, according to an ancestral tradition, the ark was hidden there. b. Once a priest b1 was engaged there, and he noticed that one of the paving stones on one place appeared different from the others. He went out to tell others of it but he had not yet finished speaking, when he gave up the ghost, thereby it was known to a certainty that the Ark of the Covenant B2 was hidden there. See, in what direction were the prostrations made? Four towards the north, four towards the south, three towards the east. P. 26. And two towards the occident, that is, towards the thirteen gates. C1 The southern gates were near a corner of the western. These were, the upper gate, the fire gate, the first lane gate, and the water gate. Why is it called water gate? Because a glass of water was carried through it for the sprinkling of the altar on the feast of booths. Aral the son of Jacob says, at that gate the waters, flowing from the holy of holies, commence to flow rapidly downwards until they again flow out under the threshold of the temple. Opposite there were the northern gates, near the other corner of the western. These were, the door of Jechaniah, the gate of sacrifice, the women's gate, and the music gate. And why is the first one called the gate of Jechaniah? Because Jechaniah went through it, when he went into exile. In the east was the gate Nakana, which also had two small doors. C2 one to the right and the other to the left, lastly, there were two in the west, which were nameless. D. 13 tables were in the sanctuary, 8 marble ones in the slaughter house, on which the entrails were washed. 2 to the west of the altar sheep, 1 marble and 1 silver, on the marble one the sacrificial pieces were placed, and on the silver table the utensils were placed two in the corridor on the inside of the temple entrance, a marble table and a golden one, on the marble one the showbreeds were placed at the time they were brought in, and on the golden one when they were taken out, because the principle is, that the veneration of their p. 27. Sacred must be heightened and not lessened. d. 1. Lastly, there was one golden table in the temple itself, 
upon which the show breeds were constantly lying. E. 13 curved chests were in the sanctuary. E. 1 on them was written, Old Shecklin, New Shecklin, Bird Offerings, Doves for Whole Offerings, Wood, Incense, Gold for the Cover of the Holy of Holies. 6 were for donations in general. E. 2 The term New Shecklin is used for those paid annually. Old Shecklin were those which were paid by men who had failed to pay them in the year when they were due and paid them in the following year. In those marked bird offerings, the money for turtle doves was deposited, in those marked doves, money for young doves was deposited, but they were all whole offerings. So says R. Jehuda. The sages say, in the former, money for both sin offerings and whole offerings was placed, and in the latter only for whole offerings. E3. P. 28. F. If one vow, I will furnish wood for the altar, he must not furnish less than two cords. If one vow, to furnish, incense, he must not furnish less than a handful. If one vow, to furnish, gold coin, he must not furnish less than a dinar. F16, chests, were for voluntary offerings. What was done with these? Whole offerings were bought for these the meat of which was sacrificed to God, but the hides belonged to the priests. F2 The following explanation was made by Jehoiada the high priest, of the expression, Lev. V. 19. It is a trespass offering, behalf, in trespassing, trespassed against the Lord. The rule is, with everything coming in under the name of sin or guilt offering, whole offerings are bought the meat of which is offered up to God and the hides of which belong to the priests. Hence the two expressions, a guilt offering for God and a guilt offering for the priests, as it is written, 2 Kings 12. 16. The money for trespass offerings and the money for sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord, it belonged to the priests. Chapter 7. Meissner, A. If money is found between the chest marked Shechlem and that marked voluntary offerings, it belongs to the chest marked Shechlem if it lies nearer to the same, and to the one marked voluntary offerings if it be nearer that. So also does it belong to the voluntary offerings if it be found midway between the two chests. Money found lying between the chests marked wood and incense belongs, if it be nearer the former, to the former if nearer the latter to the latter, and also to the latter if found midway between the two. Money found lying between the chest marked bird offerings and the one marked doves for whole offerings belongs to the former if it be nearer the former, and if nearer the latter to the latter, and also to the latter if midway between the two. Money found between ordinary monies and the monies of the second tithes belongs, if nearer the former to the former, if nearer the latter to the latter, and also to the latter if found midway between the two. A1 The rule is, one must be guided by the proximity, even in the case of the less important, but in the event of equidistance, one must be guided, by the greater importance, of the monies. B money found, in Jerusalem, on the place of the cattle dealers is regarded as second tithe. b1 money found on the temple mount. p. 30. is ordinary. b2 other money found in Jerusalem generally, during the festivals, is regarded as second tithe, at other times of the year as ordinary. b3. c. meat found in the outer court, of the temple is considered whole offering if in complete joints, if cut in pieces it is sin offering. C1 meat found in the city is considered peace offering. C2 all such meat must be laid aside for putrefaction, and then be burned in the crematory. Meat found anywhere else in the land is prohibited, to be used, as carrion, if found in whole joints, if found cut in pieces, it may be eaten, and during the festivals, when a great deal of meat is on hand, even whole joints may be eaten. C3. D. Cattle found all the way from Jerusalem to Mygdlida, 
and in the same vicinity in all directions, are considered, if male, as whole offerings, and if female as peace offerings. R. J. Huda. P. 31. Says, if they are fit for Passover offerings they may be used for such purpose, providing Passover is not more than 30 days off. D. 1. E. In former days, the finder of such cattle was pledged until he brought the drink offerings belonging to such sacrifices, every finder, however, letting such cattle stand and going on his way. The High Court decreed that the costs of the drink offerings belonging thereto be defrayed out of the public money. F. R. Simeon says, seven decrees were promulgated by that court, and the latter was one of them. Further, if a non Israelite send whole offerings with the necessary drink offerings from over the sea, they are offered up, but if sent without the necessary drink offerings, the costs of the latter are defrayed from public money. If, again, a proselyte died and left offerings, the drink offerings, if also left by him, are offered up with the others, if not left, the costs of same are defrayed out of public money. It was also a decree of the court, that in the event of a high priest dying, the necessary meat offering, Leviticus v. 13, should be paid for out of the public treasury. R. J. Huda, however, declared that this should be done at the expense of the heirs. In both cases a tenth of an ephah should be offered. g. Further, that the priests may, at the sacrificial meals, make use of the salt and the wood, from the sanctuary, that the priests do not commit a breach of trust when misusing the ashes of the red heifer g. 1. Lastly, that the public treasury reimburse. p. 32 for paid bird offerings that had become unfit. G. 2. R. Jose, however, says, he who contracts for the furnishing of the bird offerings must reimburse for the spoilt. Chapter 8. Mycena, A. All spittle A. 1 to be found in Jerusalem is considered clean, except such as is found at the upper market for this place was secluded and those afflicted with venereal diseases were in the habit of going there. Such is the teaching of Armia. The sages say, in the middle of the street it is at ordinary times unclean, and at the sides of the streets, clean. During the festivals, spittle found in the middle of the street is clean, at the sides it is unclean because such as are unclean on account of their minority usually walk at the sides of the street. b. All utensils found on the way towards the plunge bath, in Jerusalem, are unclean. Those found on the way from the plunge bath are clean, for they were not carried down to the plunge bath the same way that these were carried up from the plunge bath. So teaches Armia. Our Jose says, all are clean with the exception of such baskets, spades, and pickaxes as are used for the bones of the dead. B1. P. 34. C. If a butchering knife be found on the fourteenth day of Nisan, a Passover offering may be slaughtered with it forthwith. If it be found on the thirteenth, it must be again submerged. C. 1. A severing knife must be submerged both if found on the 13th or 14th. If the 14th, however, fall on a Sabbath, it may be used for slaughtering forthwith, so also if it be found on the 15th, if it be found together with a butchering knife, it is treated just like the latter. D. If a curtain in the sanctuary become defiled through some minor uncleanness, D1 it is submerged on the inside of the outer court, and may be put back in its place, if it become defiled through a principal uncleanness, it must be submerged on the outside and then stretched on the rampart, because sunset must be awaited. At the time it is submerged for the first time, when new, it should be spread out on the roof of the gallery, in order that the people may see the beauty of the work. E. R. Simeon son of Gamaliel, says in the name of R. Simeon, son of the assistant high priest, that the curtain was one. p. 35. Spanthic, 
woven on 72 warp cords, each cord twisted out of 20 threads. It was 40 L's long and 20 L's wide, and made, worth, of 82 myriads, dinars. E12 such curtains were made yearly, 300 priests were required to submerge it. F. If meat of the Holy of Holies F1 became defiled, be it through a minor or a principal uncleanness, in the corridor or on the outside, according to the school of Shemai it must all be burned in the court, in a place appointed for that purpose, except such as had been defiled by a principal uncleanness on the outside, of the court, according to the school of Hillel. Everything is burnt on the outside except such as had been defiled by a minor uncleanness on the inside. G. R. Elza says, anything that has become defiled through a principal uncleanness, on the outside or on the inside, is burnt on the outside, anything that has become defiled through a minor uncleanness, either on the inside or the outside, must be burnt on the inside. R. Akiba says, in the place where a thing became defiled, there must it also be burnt. H. The joints of the daily sacrifice were laid down underneath the half of the altar stairs on the westerly, according to others on the easterly, side. Those of the additional offerings on the easterly, others say oil the westerly, side. The sacrifices of the new moon were placed above the railing, others say beneath, on the altar. H1 The payment of Shechem was only obligatory during the time that the temple stood. The tithes from grain, cattle, and the deliverance of the firstlings were enforced during the existence of the temple and even after the temple. H2 If P. 36. 1 Sanctify Shechem or firstlings, they are considered sanctified. R. Simeon says, If one say, Firstlings shall be holy, they are not sanctified, because no temple exists.